Hi, this is Mike Vaucher, and in today's video, we're going to exploit the power of the Ugreen NAS and install Plex in a Docker container that will ultimately support hardware transcoding. We'll test the hardware transcoding capabilities and see how it performs with multiple streams. To find out how to set this up and to see if it met my expectations, then stick around for the rest of this video. And of course, if you find this video useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. To clarify, this video is not sponsored by anyone, and I'm just sharing my experience with the device. I've been using my Ugreen NAS more and more, especially for home lab projects, as the hardware is ideal for that environment. I've installed and tested multiple Docker containers on this hardware, and today we're going to go through step-by-step -step installing Plex as a Docker container and enabling hardware transcoding. As the DXP4800 Plus uses an Intel processor, it supports Intel QuickSync, making this a perfect hardware platform for a media server. That said, let's go ahead and get started. One thing you want to do if you haven't already done so is to create some media folders on your NAS. I would suggest creating one media folder and subfolders for movies, TV shows, and music. It'll make it much easier to configure your Docker container. Before you can install Plex, make sure you have the Docker app installed. If you haven't installed it yet, go to the App Center and install Docker first. Now that it's installed, Let's go ahead and create our first container. If you haven't worked with Docker before, you should see the different sections on the left. Though logically, you'd want to start from the first tab and work your way down. In the majority of cases, you want to start with the image first and work your way up. This is a repository of images that you have or that will be downloaded in order to create your Docker containers. Looking at the top tabs, you have a list of common images, the image database, which we'll use to find what we're looking for, and local, which are the images that we've already downloaded. If I go back to the image database and type Plex in the search field, I'll get a variety of Plex images with the most popular image at the top. The first one you see is an image from Linux server. This is a popular repository and is the one that Ugreen mentions in their own documentation, as well as other videos you may see on YouTube. However, whenever possible, I prefer to use the one directly from the brand. Most time you search for an image, it'll show up at the, in the list somewhere, but in this case, the official image doesn't show up when I type Plex. To find the official image, I actually have to type Plex INC, and as you can see, it shows up at the very top of the list when I do that. If you don't see an official image, Google and find out what they're actually calling it. There is absolutely nothing wrong with using the one from Linux server, if you prefer, but for this video, I'm going to use the official one. Now that you've found it, highlight it and click the download arrow key and it will quickly download this image to your NAS. Now that we've downloaded the file, let's go through all the settings to create our Plex container. Go to the Container tab and select New Container. Select the image we just downloaded and select Confirm. If you use something else, then select that image instead. On the next screen, we need to make a few changes and add a few things in order for this to work, starting with the name. The image name is not only the container name, but it creates the folder that your container will be stored in. You can leave the default or create any name that you want. For the purpose of this video, I'll call it Plex Official. We'll leave the CPU at unlimited, but you can experiment later if you want to use different settings if you need to. I usually leave the CPU and the memory at the unlimited setting and have not had any issues. If you want the container to automatically restart, if your NAS reboots, then enable that setting. And under Graphics Card Performance, enable this feature. But remember that you need a Plex Pass to use the hardware transcoding. Scrolling down to the PUID setting, change the value to 0, and then scroll to the PGID setting and change that to 0 as well. It's required that both of these be set to 0 in order to utilize hardware transcoding. Leave the rest of the values at default and scroll down to the end where we'll click Add. We need to add a time zone entry by creating a TZ variable and entering the value of your local time zone. For me, I'll enter America forward slash Los Angeles, but I'll put a link in the video description that has a listing of all the time zones so it can be entered correctly in the right format for your particular area. Click on Add again and let's do one more variable. 
interplex underscore claim. We'll come back and enter a value when we're finished as the when we do request a claim code, it only lasts for four minutes. So we'll want to finish the rest of the entries and settings and come back to this later. This will ultimately need to be filled out before it allows you to save the container settings. Scroll down to the storage pool section and leave the first two entries listed here alone as these are automatic and will be created under the application folder, which as I mentioned is going to be the name that you selected above. We do need to add one or more additional entries here for your media. So click add and let's create a movies library folder. In the directory section, type slash movies. And in the folder or NAS directory, click on the folder icon and select the folder you created for your movies in the beginning. In my case, it will be under media files in a folder called movies. Make sure you set the folder permissions to read and write. If all you have is movies, you can stop here. But if you have other things like TV shows or music, create a variable for each one by clicking add and adding a TV shows folder and a music folder. Again, make sure you set the permissions to read and write. Moving to the next section under network configuration, select host. This works best in a local environment and is the only setting that I use. Remember that you'll need a VPN to securely access your files remotely. Do not do any port forwarding or firewall routing as it will weaken your security. Use a secure VPN such as TailScale, OpenVPN, or WireGuard for remote access. I'll be creating a video on setting up TailScale in a Docker container in an upcoming video. Going to the next section, enable privilege mode. You'll get a warning on using this mode, so go ahead and acknowledge it and hit confirm. Now that we have all the configurations done, we'll not be able to save and run the container until we add the claim code. Jump out to a new browser window and type plex.tv forward slash claim. This will take you to a Plex site where you can generate a claim code. So click on copy to clipboard and go back to your container setting and paste it in the variable that you created for the claim code. Once you've done that, hit confirm. And if everything was done correctly, you'll get a prompt to confirm the creation and confirmation to run the container after it's created. Assuming you did everything right, your container should now be up and running. The next step is to go to Plex. From your computer's browser, type the IP address of your NAS followed by a colon 32400, which is the default port. Once Plex starts to load, you may have to log into your account or create an account if you don't have one. Since I've already logged in, I have to select the user and it will then take me to the Plex setup screen. On that screen, give your server a name, select next to add library, select movies, and select browse for the media folder. Select the movies entry you created and select add. Click next and then done, and you've created your first library. I'm not gonna go through every option or settings on configuring Plex, as there are many videos out on that topic, but feel free to post any questions in the comments below. Now that we've set up Plex and everything is working, let's test out the transcoding of multiple streams. For my test platform, I'm gonna use four Blu-ray uncompressed reps in an MKV format that have a bit rate of around 30 to 40 megabits a second, with a goal to transcode each stream to 720p with a bit rate of about 3 megs per second. This will ensure that the CPU has to work hard in order to be able to transcode these videos during playback. Loading the activity screen, we can see that currently Plex is using 0% and there are no streams with the overall CPU load of around 8% for the entire system. Adding the first stream, you can see the initial spike in CPU load, and then it settles to well below 10%. As expected, with one stream, the CPU is barely working. Let's add a second stream, and again, we see a short spike in CPU use, and then settling to around 10 to 15%. Again, the CPU is barely breaking a sweat, performing real-time transcoding on two high bitrate streams. Adding a third stream shows a similar result with a short spike in CPU, and then settling in with very little overall CPU usage. Not surprising, adding a fourth is the same story. The transcoding and capability of this device is fantastic, and even with four heavy transcoded playback streams running, it barely stresses the CPU. To verify these streams are being transcoded, let's look at the activity screen. As you can see, all four streams are showing that they're using hardware transcoding and not native playback. Setting up the docker on this device once you understand all the settings is pretty easy, and the hardware of the DXP4800 Plus is ideal to run multiple containers, including Plex. 
The Intel CPU in this device is ideally suited for transcoding video. I'm going to continue to push this device and test out other media servers such as Jellyfin to see if this is an ideal device for a home NAS media server or a home lab. Well, that's about it for today's video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this useful, as it does help promote the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.